I recently investigated a problem area in my yard and decided that a pesticide application would be necessary to control a potential sod webworm problem. Another issue that many of us are dealing with in the area are spotted lantern flies. You'll want to stick around for this one as this video features quick results on the control of spotted lantern flies and my method for treating these pests, so stay tuned. What's up guys? So today we're going to be treating for bugs. More specifically, we're looking at um, sod webworm. I can tell because of the moths that I'm seeing as I'm mowing, they get kicked up. And also we have a spotted lantern fly problem in our area. I'm in uh, southeastern PA and the lantern flies this year have been absolutely terrible. So um, we're going to be treating today with what's called Wisdom TC Flowable. This actually has the active ingredient bifenthrin. So for today's application, we're going to be using a pump sprayer with the fan tip nozzle. This is a three gallon pump sprayer and I'm going to be mixing Wisdom TC Flowable at a rate of 0.25 ounces or a quarter of an ounce per gallon of water for 1,000 square feet of coverage. This is labeled to control sod webworm, which is our main target pest today. Um, the secondary pest we're targeting is spotted lanternfly, which the Penn State University uh, does uh, recommend using bifenthrin to control. Uh, so we'll be mixing that in. Since I only have um, three gallons in the pump sprayer, um, I'm only gonna fill this up once full to treat 3,000 square feet. I have 4,000 square feet, so then I'll have to go back and mix another gallon and mix another quarter ounce of this stuff to uh, spray the remaining 4,000 square feet. So let's get started. So before we get to adding our product and spraying, it's important to follow the safety protocols for the product you are using and wear the appropriate personal protective equipment. For this application, I'm wearing closed toes shoes, long pants, a long sleeve shirt, gloves, and glasses. So to begin, I like to fill my pump sprayer with water first. This prevents foaming and spray back that may otherwise occur if you were to fill with the pesticide first. For now, I'm filling up with water to show you how the fan tip nozzle works. Pump sprayers will typically come with interchangeable nozzles that spray different patterns. Read the instructions for your pump sprayer. You want to look for the fan spraying pattern. As you can see here, it puts out a fairly wide spray band and covers the ground pretty evenly, which is why we want to use this nozzle. I like to hold the wand so that it's even with my knees. It's the most comfortable for me and gives me a consistent spraying width. Next, we're going to start adding the pesticide. Like I said earlier, I'm adding a quarter ounce of product for every gallon of water. I have a total of 4,000 square feet, but only have a three gallon pump sprayer. So I'm going to fill this with three gallons of water and three quarter ounces of pesticide. That will be enough to treat the first 3,000 square feet. Then I'll have to refill with one gallon of water and a quarter ounce of pesticide to treat the remaining 1,000 square feet. So I like to perform what's called a trim pass first with the pump sprayer, meaning that I'll trace out and spray the perimeter of the yard, then fill in the remaining area. This gives me the most control and prevents spraying on concrete surfaces. This is more important when using a pump sprayer for something like a liquid iron application since iron will stain concrete. Similarly to how I use a hose end sprayer, I like to mow the grass right before spraying. I do this because the wheel marks from the mower create guidelines for me. These guidelines form lanes that allow me to track where I'm spraying. My pump sprayer does not spray too wide. It's about the same width as my 22 inch mower deck with a bit of overlap. So I like to keep each pass within one lane. It's important to maintain pressure on the nozzle by pumping the tank often. For now, this pump sprayer has been working okay for me, but there are sprayers available that have battery powered pumps and maintain consistent pressure. Every so often, it is helpful to check the amount that's left in the pump sprayer to gauge how much product you have used. My unit has tick marks on the outside that mark every half gallon. The goal is to put the product down as evenly as possible. This is something that takes a few tries to get right, but once you've got the hang of it, you'll have a good understanding of how fast your walking speed needs to be. When I'm finished spraying, I like to clean out the sprayer immediately. First, I'll release any remaining pressure in the sprayer, then carefully start to unscrew the top of the sprayer. Then, I fill the sprayer with water and screw the top back on. I give it a good shake, then rinse the water through the nozzle by pressurizing the sprayer and holding the trigger on the wand. Then, 
I like to release the pressure and unscrew the top while still holding the trigger on the wand. This allows for any remaining water in the wand to drain back into the sprayer. I dump the contents out nearby then rinse out once more before putting it away. Okay guys, so this is why it's really important to read the label. Under the lawn application section of this particular product, it does mention that um, when we're doing a low volume application, less than two gallons per thousand square feet, which we did one gallon per thousand square feet, to immediately irrigate the treated area with at least a quarter inch of water following the application. All right, so sod webworm is considered a subsurface pest. So we will turn on the irrigation now. We just completed our spray application. So I'll turn on the sprinkler system for a little bit and get enough water in so that the stuff uh, can get right into the soil. Some viewers may find the following video disturbing. Viewer discretion is advised. Although this video was originally intended to address a sod webworm issue, we've had a sudden influx of spotted lanternfly and figured I'd show you how quickly bifenthrin works and how it targets multiple pests. The very next morning, I walked the yard and found a bunch of dead lanternflies. It was clear that the application worked. Lanternflies are not only a nuisance pest and invasive, but they are capable of causing serious damage to the host plants, including oozing sap from trees, wilting, leaf curling, and tree dieback. The Pennsylvania Department of Agriculture states that if you see spotted lanternfly, to kill it and to report it immediately to their department using the online reporting system. I'll leave a link in the description below to that site. Other things you can do to control spotted lanternfly include removing their egg masses, removing invasive host plants, such as the Tree of Heaven, and installing fly traps. I was able to collect about 30 lantern flies. Now, you don't have to use the exact product I'm using to get results. One product you can buy from your local home improvement center is Ortho Bug Be Gone. That has the active ingredient bifenthrin. There may be other brands available as well, but the key is to look for that active ingredient bifenthrin. Also know that these products have different application rates and coverage areas, so be sure to read the product label in order to get the most out of the product you are using. All right guys, so there you have it. We successfully applied our pesticide. Hopefully it works. So I'll give an update in a few weeks to see how it's going. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up, subscribe, and thank you for joining.